Today I would like to invite you into my studio to show you a short demo on the difference between a straight and zigzag stitch. Now many of my students or even attendees I meet at quilt shows indicate that they couldn't possibly thread paint like I do because it just looks too difficult. Well today I am here to show you that this thinking is just a myth and if you have just a few minutes I would like to show you just how simple thread painting can be. Now I have to admit the finished product can look like it was difficult to do. But if you will just follow the few short steps I'm about to show you, then you too will be master of thread painting in no time at all. So let's not waste any more time and let's get going. The only stitches that you use in thread painting are a straight or a zigzag stitch. Now the look of the straight stitch remains the same no matter how you rotate the hoop or and what relationship you are to the hoop. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. You can turn the hoop 360 degrees with a straight stitch and you'll get the same look. Now with a zigzag stitch, you can vary the width of the stitch and you can get different looks just by varying that width. Now it doesn't matter where you set the length on your straight or your zigzag stitch because you're controlling that length by how fast or slow you move your hoop or the speed of your foot pedal. So let's see how this works and the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get your supplies together and make sure that you have everything that you need in order to get started. Now the first thing we're going to work on is going to be on the straight stitch and the first thing you need to do is you need to pull up your thread from, your, from the bobbin. Now a lot of people will say well why do you do that? Well I do that because I don't want that little rat's nest of thread that you can get sometimes uh, when you leave, when you don't bring that thread up. Now I will tell you that those of you that do have an automatic thread cutter, that once it cuts the thread, it may cut it so short that you can no longer pull your thread to the top and that's okay. So what I'm going to do with a straight stitch is I'm going to take a few stitches to secure my stitch. Now if you have a needle up, needle down, this is a really good time to use it because what that needle is going to do, it's going to hold my hoop in place while I cut my thread here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the hoop north to south. Now remember I'm working with this straight stitch and as long as I move this hoop north to south, I get this look right here. Now I'm going to stop and I'm going to rotate the hoop a quarter of a turn. And I'm going to move the hoop east to west this time instead of north to south. I still get the same look no matter where the hoop is in relationship to me or how I turn the hoop. Now I'm going back north or south again. And you can see the same thing when I get ready to do a little, this is what I call a scribble stitch. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to make some scribbly little stitches. I'm going to stop, rotate a quarter of a turn. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make some other little scribbly stitches. And you get the same look no matter what when you've got a straight stitch. Now when you're working with a zigzag stitch, it's a little bit different. Now again, I'm going to pull my thread to the top and let's hopefully it'll come up here. Yeah, there we go. Now let's assume for purposes of discussion that the feed dog's up and we all know that the feed dogs are going to be down when you're in free motion, but for purposes of discussion, we're going to assume that the feed dogs are up. This is what your zigzag stitch is going to look like. Now here again, I need to stop, cut my thread. And this is what your zigzag stitch looks like when you are, when your feed dogs are up. Now I can decrease the width between the stitches and I get this look here. In other words, I've got more spaces between the zig and the zag so I can get this look right here. I can also come in and I can reduce the width on the zigzag stitch and make it much smaller. So that's what your zigzag stitch is going to look like when your feed dogs are up. Now let's go back to free motion. The feed dogs are now down. We're going to take a couple of stitches again to hold the thread in place. Cut my thread tails. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the hoop slowly towards me. And when I do that, I get the same look from here to here. It looks the same. All I have to do is increase the speed of the hoop and I get more space between each stitch. I can also reduce my width and I get the same look here. So with a, with a zigzag stitch, 
I can have, I will have the same look as long as I'm moving the hoop north to south. Here's with the feed dogs down, here's with the feed dogs up. So I basically get the same look no matter what I'm doing when I'm using a satin stitch. Now when you're, when you're using a zigzag stitch and we change the direction of the hoop, you get a little bit different look. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put my needle slightly above this line right here. Now in thread painting, if you'll remember one thing, the line that you're thread painting, which is going to be this line right here, as long as that line is parallel to this table edge, you'll always have a straight line of stitching. Now I'm going to stitch above this line because it makes it a little easier for you to see what I'm talking about. Now remember last time when we were doing the zigzag stitch, we moved the hoop north to south and that's what gave us a satin stitch? Well now this time if we move the hoop east to west, we get a straight line of stitches and this is what's called a fill stitch. Just by moving the hoop east to west, you get a straight line of stitching. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to fill in this little area right here. Now you can also see how quickly a zigzag stitch fills in. It didn't take me any time at all to fill in that area right there. So now you think, okay, well I've got the idea, I'm doing a straight line, this shouldn't be a big deal to go in here and thread paint this. What if I, got, what if I have a line that changes direction on me? Okay, not a problem. We're going to come up here and this time I'm going to stitch again. I'm going to thread paint right above that line. Take a couple of stitches to anchor my stitches and cut my thread. Now, remember the line that I'm thread painting, the only area, and don't do this at home, I'm just doing this so I can show you what I'm talking about. You see this little area right here between my presser foot? That's the only area that I'm concerned about when I thread paint, is I'm keeping that line parallel to me. Now when I get over here to where the line starts curving up, I'm going to stop and I'm going to rotate my hoop. If I need to bring the width down a little bit, I'm going to do that so I can successfully make this turn. And I know it's going to be hard to see with the camera, but this line right here is what I'm trying to keep parallel to me. I'm going to take a few stitches, stop, rotate the hoop. Right here is that line I'm trying to keep parallel to me. Now I can come up through here until I get to the top and I'm going to need to stop, rotate the hoop, here again, here's the line I'm trying to keep parallel until I make the curve. Now I have a straight line again, so we're pretty easy here on the straight line. I'm going to get to the other end, rotate, again, got to keep that line parallel to me. And I'm going to come down here, and all I'm going to do is keep moving the hoop. And I have successfully completed this line. Now I can make a circle with a zigzag stitch as long as my stitch width is narrow enough. So again, the one thing that you have to remember, the line that you're thread painting, as long as it's parallel to you, you'll have a straight line of stitches. Now that you've seen the demo, take a few minutes to practice and you too will begin to understand how simple thread painting can be. Now, many of my students remarked that I must have practiced for years to achieve the quality of work on my quilts. Well, that's just not so. It only takes a little bit of practice to actually get good at this. It's like anything else. Whether you're in quilting or in life, the more you do, the better you get at it. I want to thank you for spending a few minutes with me today, but as a reminder, don't forget to print out the PDF documents that accompany this workshop. Also, we, the we being my husband, who is manning two cameras, and myself, have tried to produce the video as professional as possible. However, making videos is not our profession, and there may have been a few oops and a few foo paws here and there. So have faith. I think we're going to get better at this. And again, thank you for spending some time with me. Go grab your hoop, get yourself a cup of tea, turn the stereo on, and get going.